What's going on people? Welcome to the video. I thought I'd quickly just reintroduce myself. I'm Jack, the owner of Fitness Works Gyms. Me and the, the family started this kind of venture seven and a half years ago in a little tiny gym, the mm -hmm. Rub Club. And now we are on site number seven. We've actually opened nine, but this is the, the seven. These are seven we've got running, but that is a whole other video for a later date. But Fitness Works Coventry is now complete. In the last video, I did say I'd do a bit more of a detailed show around of why we've chosen things, what we've got, how we've made this like mini site kind of work. Because if you follow me before in the past, you'll see that usually we open big old and just, <coughs> we usually open sites in big old industrial estates, which are a pain in the ass, but they make a sick functional training facility. This time we're inside a huge new, industrial estate-ish, I guess. But we're in like a sports complex. So it's like football, gymnastics, basketball, athletics, archery, everything in kind of like this sports hall. And then we've got a route, two rooms at the back end of it. Um, it's all black and red, as per usual. Like I've said in many videos, we are very, very kind of set in our ways with our branding now. And everything has to be black and red. Everything needs to be brand new-ish. But yeah, 90, 5% of our kit is always brand new. If you uh, want to know why, go back and watch the last video and I'll explain why we've done that and how we've done it. But I thought today I'd literally just give you a breakdown of this space and how we've made a small space work for us. Because I understand sometimes when you're starting your first gym, you might get a bit worried and a bit like, actually, if I open a small gym, no one will come. Uh, it won't be as good as, say, pure gym. It won't be as good as um, some of these big independents which have 40,000 15,000, 20,000 square foot units, but you can make a space work as well as one of these huge gyms. And it's kind of like, when you open a gym, it's kind of like similar to, say on Instagram, where you see a fitness model in sick shape all the time, and you think, oh, what's the point of going to the gym so I can never look like that? When it's not necessarily true. People don't always come for the equipment. People don't always come to a gym because you've got the best hammer strength machine, you've got the best kettlebells, you've got the best lights, the best paint. That's kind of just an added bonus once the environment is correct and it's like a welcoming and comfortable environment. Again, like I said in the last video, you need to figure out what your clientele is, what your avatar is, and then build a facility around that. Don't worry about that your if you're trying to compete with someone like Pure Gym, or you're trying to compete with like uh, someone with a huge budget, a marketing team, a sales team, you, you, you failed already. You need to kind of come in and create your own unique space. It doesn't matter about your budget. It doesn't matter about the color of your walls. It doesn't matter about your kettlebell. It matters about how much effort and time you put into the people that walk through that door. That is the only thing that will set you apart from these big chain gyms, that you can give quality. You don't need quantity, you need quality. When people walk in the door, you can give them your full effort where they can't. So that is the kind of difference between you and them. You've got time, you've got yourself, they've got lots of staff, they've got lots of people that some staff, I'm not saying that they're bad, but some staff are probably amazing, but others aren't so good. So the user or, or the experience of the client, the customer journey into your gym can be so much better because it's just you and potentially a couple of trainers. So that is what will set you apart from these huge gyms. Do not try and compete with them, unless you've got a massive budget and you've got super rich parents and trust funds and everything, which is pretty cool. I don't have that. Um, but you will, uh, you'll, that's how you'll beat them. We're well, not necessarily beat them because you shouldn't be competing with anybody, but that is what will, will make you successful. It's just the time and effort that you can put in. Anyway, this space is 2,000 square foot. I know it sounds pretty small compared to like, well, it does, it's not pretty small because this is, the way we've, we've worked it is, is, is amazing. It's, we've chose the right equipment, we put it in the right place, 
we've got lots of open room, we've got loads. It's kind of like, the way I'll describe this space is when you go to a hotel and you go to their, their shit gym, this is kind of like the size of a hotel gym, but it's designed by gym goers. It's not designed by Sally from marketing. So now you actually have a proper gym in a smaller space. It's all Nautilus, Star Trek concept. You've got like, this machine is super popular. We think we've got the first one, um, maybe Shrewsbury, I think. And then we've put them in every single gym since, or maybe the studio. We've got one at Bristol, we've got one at the studio, we've got one at Leamington, we've got one here. So we've got glute drives is now. That's like an added extra actually from the list that I said that we've created, the glute drive, because a lot of girls do hip, for, even lads, like I use it all the time, because it's just easier than putting big bruises across your pelvis. It's actually a lot better. It focuses a lot more on your glutes and hamstrings rather than hip thrust when you're trying to like thrust it up with your lower back. Um, leg press, quite a big footprint. So these are quite big machines. These are probably the biggest machines, but I think every gym does need a leg press. We don't have a leg, well, I guess you don't, but to me, it's kind of like, it's one of the, the fundamentals of a fitness works is a leg press. Um, and again, this is since we started our first gym at Kenilworth, this is like a new added bolt onto our, our fundamentals kit list is a hack squat. So we put these three machines over here. So it's kind of like a, a lower body section because it then means you can actually walk through. It's like the little things you don't think of. It's all well and good getting a fancy CAD draw, draw in or a mock-up of your gym and you put them all in. But then in real life, you've got to think of things about putting the plates on, about loading the plates, about the, the member getting into the machine, members around the machine. So obviously you've got someone with four plates on here, up and down in, whatever they do. You've got a lot of weight moving. So it's like someone's on the bench, you can't have it close because they may get hit by the plates or when they're off load. Anyway, so you, little things like that that you don't think of until you get the machines here and put them in place. When you are building your first gym or, or you're building it or you are doing it now or whatever you're doing, they weigh a ton. We've got these special little skateboards now, but before we used to move them around. We must have moved these machines how many times? Five, six, seven, ten times? Because we just couldn't get them in the right space. But now we've kind of, I think, found the perfect place for them. One machine, that, well not machine, one piece we didn't actually have. This is the only piece in here which is used because I don't know how I did it, but I actually forgot to order a bench press. Um, when I ordered this kit uh, quite a while ago, I didn't actually order a bench press, which is such a schoolboy. And then we were gonna put people benching the squat racks, but then you takes up a squat rack. So this came up, it's, it's basically brand new, but this is the only piece in here which isn't, isn't new. It's just a, a strength shot bench. If you've ever seen on social media, we have one of these originals. My brother broke it and they've, they've strengthened them up now. Dual cable crossover, I think it's called. Every gym should have these. These are on the fundamental list. Quite cool now, like, you now have like flicks. So instead of having those pins which everyone bends, get fucking jammed in or they lose them, they put them in their pockets, take them out. I don't know what people do with the pins, but they always get broken. They always get jammed in the machine. Well, sometimes you come to a machine and there's fucking two pins in it. Like two, like why do you need two pins? Anyway, so now all you need to do is that. Flick it over and it, and it activates the weight or whatever. So it's quite cool because like you can do a drop set. So it's like put two up and then you do your exercise, come over and flip one and you're straight back into the next exercise. They're all right at the moment. We haven't used them that much. Pretty sure they're probably, gonna, cause I'm not sure how it, if it breaks what we do. Uh, so we haven't got that far yet, but I'm sure. I'm sure, not sure, I can guarantee they will break. Somehow I'll have to, well, I'll rip to try and fix it. Here, so I did say about having some combo machines, so space savers. So you can kind of get two exercises or two machines in one. Instead of having the foot plate of, of two machines, which we wouldn't have fit in, they're the same machine in one. So this is like a, like a low row here, so you can look, row it in. It's quite a nice machine, but I've got a feeling it might be slightly bent. And then also you've got like a, a lap pull down up here, which is quite cool. So it's a bit, of, a bit of both. They're good for our clientele because we're not a heavy lifting, power lifting, bodybuilders gym. We are kind of, we're here to service our avatar um, and that kind of machine and weight will do. And to be honest, you're not Ronnie Coleman. So if you're maxing that out, you're probably not using correct form anyway, because it's heavy, it's heavy. Anyway, dumbbells up to 50. All of our other gym, these are the first time we've really used these. They're like rubber or, uh, not a rubber, I think they're like a spec, I don't know what they are. 
some special chemical to stop them chipping all the time because some of the rubber ones we had originally when you put them in the racks all the time all the rubber crumbles off and before you know it you've got a dumbbell with one metal end and one rubber end so this kind of has meant to stop it i'm not sure yet we haven't used them enough but they go up to 50 and they are hexagonal is that the word hexagonal yeah whatever shape that is pentagon. yeah <laughs> pentagon fuck no anyway that's those dumbbells at kenilworth we've got nice branded circle chrome shiny dumbbells they are great they look cool they're very good for instagram they're good for social media but they're an absolute nightmare they do snap in two some of them are snapped they, the company we bought them for replaced it like that but they did break and also the rack which was provided a circle dumbbell they fucking roll off the end so you end up coming in the gym and you've got we fixed it now but it's little things like that, that they look great they look amazing the only problem is they're not as durable as a dumbbell like this also they roll around and another thing if you're doing small group classes or you are doing classes circle dumbbells aren't very good for say you're doing like a a devil's press you've got a circle dumbbell it's like you see sally go down and all of a sudden she's starfish because the dumbbells rolled off where these they don't move so they're a lot better Nautilus benches, I think this is the heaviest bench in the world. It must weigh like 100 kilos. Like, honestly, so heavy. Just a solid bench. I don't need to explain that much, do I? But we've got three. We actually were going to get rid of one, but it works quite well. Like three adjustables and then a decline. So you can do sit-ups, decline presses, loads of exercises on there. This is a really cool machine. And when I did buy it, when, when I ordered it, I was a bit sceptical. Because sometimes when you go to like multi-use machines it's kind of like you're buying three machines but they're not good for anything so you're buying a machine which does three exercises but they don't actually do those three exercises very well so you end up with a machine which you can do three things in but you can't actually do one thing properly but this is actually not did quite well on this so it's like shoulder press so it's a, it's a nice little angle i usually press it forwards you're probably a bit more mobile than i am but i can't actually get into the thing but so it's like a shoulder press so it's actually not too bad because I'm so not very mobile, I kind of go forwards. So press forwards and into it, a bit like a Viking press. So a bit there and press up. But again, so it can go to incline and then it can also go to completely flat. So then you've got like a, like a flat chest press. Like you, you see quite a lot of these machines now. But it's quite a nice little machine. Then you can just come under, then you can just press up. I used this the other day actually, to train upper body. It's actually really good. Like again, it's not the heaviest stack. We've got cardio ish here, we've got more in the back, but this is for our small group classes. We don't have two of everything, three of everything. We've just got the fundamentals rower, ski erg, bike erg, uh, hip bike. I'm 50 50 on this one. It doesn't, it's a good machine, it's built well, as per usual, Star Trek, Nautilus stuff. It weighs 200 kilos. So it ain't moving, but it's just uh, it's a softer version of an assault bike. So it's not as brutal, which is quite good, especially if you're not like competing or you're not doing calories, max cal like, you know what I mean? Like hardcore metcon -y work. If you're just doing a class, it's kind of, it's good. It's kind of like, it bridges that gap between a real hard assault bike and uh, a concept bike, so it's kind of like an in-between. So it's harder than the concept bike, but it's not as hard as the salt bike. So for us, in this environment, this unit, it's actually quite handy. Small sled run. I said in the last video that we changed stuff up because the sled, was down, the sled run was down the middle. But then we thought about it, like if you put a sled run down the middle, you kind of, you, you've got no open space. You've just got this random piece of carpet down the middle, which you can't do anything on. We, we moved it over here. We were, I, I personally did say about getting rid of it completely, but we haven't yet made a facility without like a sled run on it. And do you know what? The first open weekend, more people asked about the sled run than anything else. So we put the sled run in, nice just little sled. It's easy, like, especially if you're PTing. It's a nice little space to do PT on, push the sled up and down, do some walking lunges, do a little workout on there. The whiteboard's there so you can program your own workouts. Another set of dumbbells here again. Um, they're used for the classes. Kettlebells, Wolverston kettlebells. These are solid, these are. We've got them at every site. So we've got doubles of everything, because in our small group classes, we only do eights here, so it's quite condensed. Um, but they're small classes, but they're, they're more like small group PT. Um, bars, usual 15s, 20s, 
And then I've shown you a million times on Instagram, YouTube, these Nautilus racks. Uh, again, built like a tank, weigh a ton, but they're, they're wicked. Like they don't move, uh, they don't have to pin them to the floor, don't have to drill into the floor. Um, two of those here. I do need to go to the shop and get some mirrors for the backs of the walls, just little things I missed out. And another adjustable bench. Again, I ordered too many adjustable benches and didn't order a flat bench. Oh, wow. Finally, leg extension, hamstring curl, space saver one again. It's actually really good. Like I said, sometimes when you get these dual machines, they're good for nothing. But these are actually a solid, a solid machine. Like the, the leg extension is so nice. And then the hamstring curl, again, is wicked. This kind of uh, locks you in. And it's fully adjustable. It's so, like, everything's built. So that's the good thing about, this is a good thing about buying brand new kit, which is new. Everything's built so, literally so solid. And like you move it around to go down to the next one. It's got so many different adjustments. It's, it's just so much better. Where sometimes if you, you, you try and save yourself a thousand pounds, you buy a machine which is second hand, doesn't have many adjustments, people don't like the way it looks, and then you end up spending more money replacing parts and reclothing it or whatever it's called, upholstery, upholstery, whatever you call it. Um, then you end up spending just as much as you would have buy a brand new one. And again, we've moved them 16 times through now, wherever they are. So that is the main room. As you can see, it's got everything you need for a solid workout. And yeah, it works. Works really well. The open weekend went down extremely well. People came in and didn't realise how, like, we're quite shocked with how much stuff we've actually managed to fit in here. Um, and how it works. Like, the other, when was it, Monday night? Tuesday night, we had our first class. Nine in the class, five, six training, music loud, door open. We're sick. And obviously our lights are, I can say they're kind of like our signature thing now. These lights, by the way, these lights, right, I... Wanted to change the way the fitness works. Like the, actually the studio, the studio just had a black roof and looked, looked crap. It didn't look crap, it looked class, but it looked bland like it was missing something. So I went on Pinterest and found some cool lights. Anyway, I found these, they weren't X's, they were, I don't know what they were, they were some shape. As you can tell with hexagonals, I don't really know shapes too well. Some form of shape and I thought, that's wicked. Anyway, so I inquired about it, came back, it's like four and a half grand a light. So I was like, uh, no. So. We made these, uh, we found these tubes and built our own version. It's actually, I think it's better. And I think they cost about 400 quid each. So that's like 800 quid for two lights, where you're looking at four grand for this. I can't even remember. It was like, a, like a, an arrow. It looked cool anyway, but it's not worth four grand. It's absolute robbery. These are like 400 quid each and we, you can put them up yourself. And now we've got these at all the gyms. It just breaks up the roof a bit. And again, it's just quite cool. They look wicked. They look, we don't do it for social media, but they look wicked on social media. They look wicked on people's Instagram. And when, they, when you see it in the background of people's lifting on Instagram and on whatever social platform, they kind of know what gym it is. So cardio room. Right, cardio room. So this is a bit of a dungeon. No, it's not, it's quite cool. I think it's wicked. Um, Treadmills. I think if you saw in the last video, these mirrors were all smashed at the bottom. I think before, so before it was like a dance studio. And do you know when you do ballet? What's that bar called? Bar? 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 Bar. Bars where you see girls doing mad stuff on their tiptoes. That was one of those down there. And I think when they took it off, they smashed the mirror. Anyway, <laughs> if it was one mirror, we would have replaced it, but it was every single one. But in the end, anyway, we needed to, this is all going to be lit up, we just haven't finished it off yet. We wanted to, we needed plugs for the treadmills and everything, and we needed a place for lighting. So we decided, my dad decided to make this crinkly tin. It's quite cool, I really like it. So we could hide the wires, and again, it, it, it hit, the, hit the smashed mirrors. Because each one of those, like little things like this, like each mirror, that's like 700 quid. So there's like over two and a half grand in mirrors just on that wall. But we only needed a little bit. We did think about getting rid of them completely, but then it makes the room even more like a, a dungeon. So we just did little things like that, just covered up stuff that we didn't need to replace. Obviously, if it was smashed all over, we would have replaced it, but we needed a way to hide the wires so we didn't have wires traipsed all across the floor. Cross trainers, again, Star Tracks, they're wicked. Uh, these bikes have been, this, these bikes have been reconditioned. They're never used. They were stored out the back. 
So we just, when we took over the place, we bought them, well, all the care, we just moved them and they all moved and adjust. So we literally just reconditioned them. My mum scrubbed them, cleaned them. And they're like brand new. Um, rowing machines. And then it had a bag in here before and people did ask. So we put, we're not a boxing gym, but again, it's good for fitness. So in this cardio room, you can do like some, some Metcon, some intervals, you're boxing, rowing, you can go on the bike. There was a concept bike in here, but we took it in there. We did have two concept bikes, but again, they didn't fit. So we took one back to our, but it did fit, but it made this place very small and condensed. So we took that one in there and we took one back to Kenilworth. And then you've just got row machines, normal static bikes. Instead of plastering fitness works all over the walls, we just thought we'd put a nice little subtle fitness works with the red light bouncing off the mirror. So when you come through the door, like you can, it's cool as you're walking into it, you see through the window, you kind of see our two things, like the red light and the fitness works. So we do actually think about these things, believe it or not, because you do want an aesthetically pleasing gym. I don't want a dark gym, a pitch black gym, because it just puts you off training. And I don't want a disco gym. I don't want super fancy stuff. Like we are what we are. We do what we say on the tin. Is that saying? We do what we say on the tin. And fitness doesn't always have to be mega fancy, you know? Sometimes the fundamentals are better than having all singing, all dancing. Like people have asked me why I haven't got, because these are brand new, why I didn't get the ones with TVs on. And the reason I didn't get the ones with TVs on is because each time one of you thumbs Netflix, because it's not like loading in 0.6 of a second, and you whack the screen, you smash the screen, or break the, the touch screen, they're like something like three grand per console. So, no. YouTube on your phone, like, because I know that will happen. So what I've tried to do, what we try to do, is build things which will last without much ag. And yeah, they're good for your ego and showing off that you've got nice stuff, but when you've got to fix them all the time, you've got to spend three grand a, uh, three grand a screen because someone's put their thumb through the screen, then you're going to be pretty annoyed. Um, but now that can't happen. Anyway, so that is Fitnessworks Coventry. I hope they gave you a little insight into why we've done things, how we've done it, and it might help you if you're doing the same thing or you're thinking of doing the same thing. Um, if you are thinking of doing the same thing, maybe watch back on some of my older videos. I tried to talk about, like, I'm not a professional in this, I've just done it for a long time now. And these are all things that I've learned through gym one, gym two, three, four, five, six. Um, and now I think, well, probably I don't think actually, I definitely haven't, but most things have come up. I've made most mistakes. We bought things we shouldn't have bought. We bought kit when we shouldn't have bought it. We've lost money on things we shouldn't have lost money on. And now we've kind of got a process where we can turn it around in three and a half weeks and we know what we are and how we do things. But it takes time. But just have a go. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.